Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. I can't believe it's already November. I feel like this whole year has just been flying by and now everyone's ready for Christmas and holiday content. So I'm definitely planning to create some holiday content, but for today's video, we are creating some DIYs and I thought that I would challenge myself to try and DIY some things that I've been eyeing in stores for less money, obviously. And I tried to make these as cost-effective as possible. I'm really happy with how these two projects came out, so let's jump into the first project. So for this first DIY, I've actually been eyeing a terrazzo candle for a while. This one is from Anthropology. It is 28 bucks, and although it is beautiful, I just don't want to spend more money on candles because I feel like I have so many already. And initially for my DIY version, I was planning to just buy a container and just paint it and have a terrazzo pattern on it but I actually found a way easier solution, so let's jump into the first project. Hello from VoiceOver Tina. So this first project is really easy to do. I actually found this ceramic container with a lid on it at Dollar Tree, and I immediately thought it would be perfect for this project. It already has a terrazzo pattern on it, and I think that the gold lid also makes it look a bit more high-end, so I'm really glad that I found this. But of course, you can find any ceramic container and paint a terrazzo pattern on it. I've done that for a past projects, so if you're interested, I will link those down below. But this was such a good find that I just had to use it for this project. So to create this candle part, I'm actually going to use an old candle that I also got from Dollar Tree. This one actually has a slight green tint of wax on it and I wasn't using it that much so I decided to melt it down for this project. So to do this I'm going to boil some water in a pot and I'm just going to let it sit there until it warms up and then I'm just going to place my candle right in there. I've watched many DIY videos of people melting down candles before but honestly this was my first time so it was so exciting for me to try this out for myself. And as that's melting down, I'm gonna work on my container. So I'm just gonna create some small feet for the candle. And for this, I'm using these small wooden cubes from Dollar Tree again. I'm just gonna glue these down at the bottom and I'm just gonna use three of these. I'm kind of obsessed with things that have three legs right now. So that's what I'm choosing to do for this project. But you can always glue down four if you'd like. Also, you'll notice that I'm putting down a bunch of glue first to cool down a bit before adding the wooden cube on top. And that's just because the bottom of this one caves in a little bit. So to make sure that everything's leveled, I'm just gonna add some height with that glue. So here's how everything's looking. Now let's check back in with my candle. You can see that it's all melted down now and this took me about 40 minutes and I'm just gonna remove that from the heat and let it cool down a little bit before handling it again. So next, I'm using a wick from the craft store and I'm gonna glue it down to the center with some hot glue. I've seen people using melted wax to adhere it to the bottom, but I couldn't get that method to work, so that's why you'll see some wax already in there. So just ignore that, but if you're an avid candle maker, please leave me some of your tips down below since I am such a newbie to this. Then I'm gonna wrap the wick around the dowel and this helps it stand up. To finish it off, I'm pouring my melted wax into the jar, and if you're using the same candle from Dollar Tree, you will actually need more than one to fill this up, so I had to melt some more wax to top it all off. So at this part, all you need to do is to let it sit and wait for the wax to harden. And once it's all set, you can go ahead and cut down the wick and your new candle is ready to be lit. This candle came out so cute, the terrazzo pattern is so fun, and the little wooden legs really complement the candle. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like the smell of a burnt candle wick, so the gold lid on top is so amazing. I'm so glad I was able to create this project with all items from Dollar Tree. It was under $4 to make, and I think it'll look great in any space. So for the next item that I tried to DIY, it is an eye mirror, and I've been seeing these everywhere. They are a little bit more pricey, so you can find versions that are gold, and they are upwards of $50, or you can even find some rattan versions, which are also pretty pricey. So I thought to myself, maybe I can DIY it. And initially, I thought I would be the first person to try this, but I actually found a couple of tutorials on YouTube and I thought the way to accomplish this was just genius and I wanted to try my hand at it and I'm really happy with how it came out. I also included a few tricks that I used to make this look as professional as possible. So let me show you how I did it. For this project, I'm using a five inch mirror and I just got this from my local craft store. You can also find similar ones at Dollar Tree. And to go along with that, I got a five inch embroidery hoop to frame it, and I'm also using a 10 inch embroidery hoop to form the eye shape. 
So I'm just gonna use the outer part of the hoop and save the inner part for a future project. So first I'm marking it off to create the perfect eye shape. And you can also just cut it in half since this is just a rough shape to start. And to cut it, I'm using my handy dandy hacksaw from Dollar Tree. Right now, I'm just gonna cut it at no particular angle, but you'll see later on that I'm going to adjust where I want to cut just to ensure that everything fits together perfectly. Once that's all cut, I'm going to try and piece together my eye shape. This gives me a better idea of where I need to make my cuts, so I'm just gonna lay the pieces on top of each other to create more cut lines. And this time around, I'm gonna mark off the exact angle so that the pieces will fit together perfectly. I think this part is super crucial just to make sure that we have a really clean look and it's a little bit of trial and error so I'm just going to go back and forth to make sure that all my cuts are perfect. And now you'll see that when I try to fit them together, the two pieces should lay perfectly to create the eye shape. Now it's time for eyelashes. So I'm just using these 12 inch dowels from Dollar Tree for this part. First, I'm just gonna space them out evenly. And then in this clip, there are six dowels, but I actually ended up doing seven eyelashes on the top and the bottom. And I'm just gonna roughly mark how long I think they should be. The top eyelashes are about three inches, so I'm just gonna mark it off, creating four eyelashes per dowel. And then for the bottom ones, I made those two inches, but then I changed my mind and made the lower ones shorter, so that's what you'll see in the next few clips here. And again, I'm just gonna cut these all out with my hacksaw. I've seen this mirror in so many different designs, so feel free to make it as long or as short as you want them to be. And can you guys believe that I'm still using the same hacksaw from Dollar Tree? It definitely gets the job done, but I feel like I should upgrade soon, especially if I want to work on larger projects. Also, let me know what kind of projects you guys would like to see me do in future videos. I love getting your input, so leave me a comment down below with your ideas. So after all the pieces are cut out, I'm just going to sand them down with a sandpaper block, and I want these to be as smooth as possible. And now all the pieces are ready to be assembled, so I'm using my Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks for this project, and this just ensures that everything bonds together really securely. Also, don't mind the reflections in the mirror. It's always so hard to film in mirrors, so if you see something, it's most likely the arm that I use to film. So for the mirror part, I actually tried to put glue on the mirror first and then put the hoop on top, but that did not work out so well. So I found the best trick to gluing this is to do it upside down. So I'm going to lay the mirror face down right onto the hoop, and then I'm gonna add the glue right on top of that, and it just works out so much better. Not only does the glue actually stay better, but it's also a lot cleaner as well. And then to glue the outer part, I'm just gonna keep it upside down. This just ensures that all the edges in the front are leveled and that way we don't have to mess with any more glue. And here you'll see that I'm adhering the middle parts first. So working on the top one and then the bottom one. And then I'm gonna glue each edge down. And then after gluing the edges, I'm just going to secure them with some masking tape. And before moving on to the next part, I'm just going to clean up the hot glue seams. And I think this is just super important to do for a more professional look. So initially, I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to cut off the dried glue edges. And this just works so perfectly for a clean edge. Then, without actually squeezing the hot glue gun, I'm just gonna use the hot tip to remelt the rough edges of the glue. This is a great trick if you ever feel like you have too much glue on there and that you need to smooth it out. So now we are good to go for the next step. And for the middle dowel, I actually measured that one out, but for the rest of them, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Each one of the dowels just needed one small bead of hot glue, and then I just held it down super tight, starting with the middle one. Then I'm gluing the two outer dowels on each edge, and then that way I could just eyeball the remaining two in between. And I'm just gonna repeat this to the bottom part as well. Finally, you can add some glue or a sawtooth picture hanger or even picture hanging strips on the back of this like I did to hang it all up. And oh my gosh, guys, I think this came out so good. Considering I spent under 10 bucks to create this, I think it looks amazing. It's going to look so good as part of a gallery wall or just leaning it up against the wall or on a shelf. I'm just so happy with how this came out. And I think this project almost looks store-bought, so I'm really, really happy with it. 
I'm so happy with how both of these projects came out. I think they look so good. They look professional, they look store-bought, and they were both under 10 bucks to create, so that is just an added bonus. Let me know down in the comments below which one was your favorite. I can't really choose one. I think they both look so good. I think that the candle one can actually be converted and be changed into a planter. And you can put a cute little succulent or a cactus in it and it will just look so adorable. Okay, I just had to show you guys one more time because I'm just so proud of how this piece came out. I think it looks so professional and store-bought and I really hope that you guys try this project out. I had so much fun creating these projects and I'm definitely planning on creating more challenge videos like this where I try to DIY store-bought items. And if you guys have any requests of what I should try to DIY next, please leave them in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. I have lots of exciting content coming up before the year ends and I just can't wait to show you guys what I create next. Follow me on Instagram if you guys haven't already. I'm posting on there every single day and I really love interacting with you guys on there so give me a follow so that is it for today's video thank you guys all so much for watching stay inspired and i'll see you in the next one bye